Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today I'm as happy as an old geezer can be. But anyway, before we get into all the happiness and stuff, that right there is the channel sticker from Chuck Bomarito. If you'll notice, my head's not covering that thing up. Right there. Alright. See Chuck, complaining did help. I the management talked to me about it. So there you go. Anyway, back to happy old geezers rednecks whatever I went to the steel challenge today with this little red dot sight and I knocked 30 seconds off my time I would have knocked 39 off but I missed three times and then shot the clock plate so I got a nine seconds penalty um, <laughs> tough break huh this <clears throat> I led somebody really wrong on this too before they'd asked me what to use it for and I said well you just use that on rifles well that's not so. This thing works wonderful on a pistol, you know. It's got a really nice bright red dot, or you can have a green dot if you want it. Turn up the switch the other way. I just stick with the red because I'm used to it. But anyway, that was what made my day. And uh, I've got some orders in. Remember the crying about all the oil in the floor from changing oil in Tacoma? Well, this is what is described as a forged oil filter wrench. The one I was using was sheet metal, and it would just jump over the flats if the, you know, if the little filter cover was tight instead of taking it off. And you could put a paper towel in it, and it would still jump over the flats because that thing was on tight. So today we're going to make something for uh, for the vise. We're going to make some uh, high density polyethylene vise jaws. And these are going to be specialized. They're going to be jaws that I can stick a gun barrel in for unscrewing things because a lot of a lot of the modern scary black guns are kind of fragile. And if you want to screw something on or off the barrel or whatever, you could break the the whole thing, you know, like the stock or who knows, the receiver, practically any part of it. So you need another extra little tool to help out. And off camera, without y'all watching, I'm going to put this little valve on the uh, generator because when I when I want to drain all the gas out and run the carburetor dry and all that, I thought I pulled the, the regular fuel line off and I put another hose on there. It was a little bit loose, so I put a tie wrap on it and pulled her down tight and snatched the end off of this uh, <laughs> off this thing. This little little piece that sticks out for the the fuel line to hook on to. I was kind of disappointed in that, but you know, that's the brakes when you get carried away. So, anyway, without any any further carrying on here, uh, let's go ahead and get started, all right? Just a thought, I paid for this. I'm not getting any compensation to, to review it or anything, but this is a, a True Glow red dot site. I just thought maybe they ought to have a, get a little credit for their name because it's done so well for me. There's a hurricane in the Gulf and outdoor activities are sort of curtailed. But I wanted uh, something to do today and tying up loose ends is a good thing to do. One of the things I had planned to make was uh, some vice jaws to put barrels in to hold rifles. And I also plan to make one of those plastic things that you set an AR on. You know, it looks like the magazine, only it's just plastic. You put it in a vise to hold it, setting up straight. Well, I gave it a little thought, what plastic have I got to fit? Well, the, the, the answer was none of the above. You know, I didn't have any plastic that fits. But I did this little thing the other day, built this mold. So, we're going to just fill this little sucker up plastic and we're going to pop it in my oven and we're going to melt it down real good then we're going to squeeze it in there and we should have something to make some nice HDPE which is high density high density polyethylene jaws that sure is a mouthful to say but anyway I'm going to fill it up I've got a fair amount of white plastic. White plastic's always nice for things that look real clean I guess. But it was what was in the top of the pile. 
that's why I'm using it. I'm going to fill this little sucker up, put it in the oven, let it cook down, and if I run out of white plastic, what I've got is this. If I run out of white plastic before I'm done, I'll put in some red or yellow, whatever I got. But this should make a good start. It's all chopped up in little pieces and ready to roll. I thought I had the oven plugged in, but it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, if you see that little stack of flapper wheels, I got those for, I think, $10 at an auction the other day, so I was pretty happy about that. And I got two dozen work gloves for about uh, 22 bucks. so I can throw those away if they get dirty, you know? And I'll take you to the door and show you what else I got. My plans were to go to uh, Harbor Freight along in September, October, whenever it cools off, and get one of their wood chippers so I can remove two more trees. After all, I don't want to repeat the debacle of uh, hauling the tree to the dump like last time. It cost me about a little $250 just to get rid of one tree, and I did all the work myself. So this time we're going to turn it into mulch. The camera's cool and the weather is humid. But anyway, there's what else I got at the auction. A, a nice Sears and Roebuck wood chipper. Got a 14.5 horsepower motor on it. Been used about four hours and it's ready to roll. When the weather breaks, some towards the end of September or in October, we're going to put that guy to work chipping. And I got him, you know, it's got half again more engine than the Harbor Freight. And I got it for $325, so I thought that was a pretty good deal. Well, she's warming up in there now. I'm not going to show you pulling it in and out and pushing the stuff down every time. We'll show you the maybe the final push down or maybe a little bit in the middle. But the, the main part of this is we're going to melt enough plastic in that little mold to... Uh, make uh, some vice jaws or to make the plastic thing I want or hopefully I'll do it twice and I'll get enough to make everything okay so let's just let you guys rest while I melt plastic this will probably take me a, an hour or two pretty sure all right so what we're going to do is take this little block of wood just like last time stick it over in there crank this thing down on it, most of which can be done by hand right at first. Close the valve and crank her on down. You can see that there was a lot of air space in there. Alright. the thing out of there now. I'm trying to keep this clean so I get on some of the new gloves I bought. However I do this stuff, there's always one more problem. And that's, that's the happy part of it. So there you go. Let's I'm trying to knock it out of there. Ah, I'm going to have to put a screw in it and, and drag it out. All right, too bad. Well, that's probably the last pressing down. That stuff's kind of squirting out around the edges. And <clears throat> if it gets good and solid like it did the last time, that should, uh, that should do the job right there. Seems like I put plenty of pressure on it. And if it's squirting out around the edges, that's, that's time to stop. We'll let that cool until tomorrow. And then I'll come back and see if I can... Uh, 
quite like to convert them into a pair of vice jaws. When you come out of the cool and all this humidity, it just fogs over. I cut most of the okra stalks down to about two foot tall. Got the one over there I'm trying to let go to seed. And it's, I'm having a hard time keeping it upright, especially with all this stuff. But I'm gonna have to wade out in there and gather okra. I just said quit being a deadbeat and go get it. Hard to keep the wind from fogging over, but there's all the water standing in the back of the garage. It's, uh, yeah. I need to work out some way to get rid of that. Well, the death dealing wind and the floods of biblical proportions didn't show up. It's got so these days, even the weather channel has to get into height and exaggeration. I guess they're all trying to have some more spectacular event than the next one has. Give it a couple of good whacks. Here comes the wood. <coughs> and there goes the plastic. Probably have to make another another piece of wood for the next one. I don't know. It's looking a little worse for the wear. It'd be nice to have a piece of metal. Look at there, there's a great big hole right there. I'll have to cut it off and make another piece just like it to, to make vice jaws, obviously. Well, I'll let you rest a bit while I figure out what's next. I strapped a uh, clamp with a piece of metal on there to serve as a guide so that maybe I can make a fairly straight cut. We'll see. So, yeah, if I work, I bleed. I scraped it on the edge of this stupid table. There's never a safe place. Well, there's the, the hole. I think I can work around that. So this will be one jaw. I'm going to have to re-melt all this to make the other jaw. But we can do that. I think I must have gotten a big hurry, you know come up with this uh, stupid hole in the plastic so back to the oven the uh, yellow plastic was arm and hammer laundry detergent bottles so it smells kind of like a laundromat in here uh, I don't know if they call them laundromats in uh, other English speaking places but you know one of those places where you go and you pay a put coins in a slot to use the washer and the dryer for your cleaning your clothes. Like I say, I don't know what other people call it, but that's one of the things we call it here. We call them laundromats or washeteria, whatever you want. All right, so let's get to trying to just level this off. I need to spend a little more time positioning this, so put you to sleep. All right, I think maybe that's in position this time. We hope. Not.
Okay, for now, I'm going to let that be as if it were totally square. Because I'm going to drill a hole between them, you know, lengthways in a couple of spots. And that might well just remove this void. And there may be other voids down in there anyway, so we're going to say that that's a squared off piece. And I'll go ahead and finish melting the other one, and then we'll we'll wind up over here with the other piece as well. It uh, it may need a little a little more smoothing off there, but it feels pretty good to me. I'm reasonably happy with this piece. It's solid as a rock, and it's exactly pretty much exactly one inch thick from end to end and side to side, two and a half inches wide. It uh, it came out really good, other than the fact that it's got these voids here and there. Uh, I guess I rushed the job a little bit, didn't let it stay heated in the oven long enough to get all the air bubbles out. But this next piece, I'm going to apply more heat and longer. And when I get it, we'll sandwich them together. We'll drill a hole here, a hole here, and maybe a hole over here with them touching each other. And uh, there'll be vice jaws. But they'll be special vice jaws. They'll be made to hold an AR-15 barrel or any other kind of rifle barrel or pistol, long pistol barrel, whatever, in between the, the jaws. One of the guys from my shooting club, the name of Brian, gave me a bunch of uh, cutoffs. I, get, I think these are Delrin. It wasn't perfectly it, round at first. I cut it off with a saw, playing with it, seeing how hard it was to work with. And... Uh, it's pretty neat. Thanks, Brian. All right, so here's a second block of cheese. I mean, plastic. And I'm going to try and separate it from this. I can. I know you don't want to watch me whacking at this thing, so I'll put you to sleep for a while. Well, this one came out with holes in the top of it, but I can cut it off to about an inch thick and everything will be all right. I don't know what's causing this because it didn't happen the first time I used that mold. It's, uh, I guess, something I'll have to figure out. It's really odd, though. All right, so I got a machine. One's a little thicker than the other because when I thought it was about as cleaned up as it was going to get, that's where I stopped. So, and I, since I worked later than than normal out here, I'm going to knock it off until tomorrow, and then we'll we'll go ahead and finish the the whole thing, and I'll have made up my mind exactly how I want to do it. 